Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can use credit cards to help improve your credit score and also how it can help you earn extra money. But before we talk about any of that, we need to establish if you're even a good candidate for a credit card. Credit cards are great financial tools for people that can follow a budget and are strict on their spending. So if you're the type of person that will go and spend almost all of their credit limit and then carry debt from one payment period to the next payment period, you are not the person I'm talking about. You should not get a credit card. It will wreak havoc on your life. But if you're the type of person that's going to stay within their budget and pay off their debt at the end of each payment period, you're the person I'm talking to. And we're going to talk today about how you can use credit cards to get the bank to start paying you instead of the other way around. One of the main reasons why you want a credit card is to help improve your credit score. Credit scores are what banks look at whenever they go to lend you money. The higher your credit score, the better borrower you are to the banks. So credit scores range from 300, meaning the banks aren't going to loan you anything, all the way up to 850, meaning the banks would lend you just about anything you want. You might be thinking, well, how do I get a credit card if I don't have a credit score or if I don't have any credit history? I'm all new to this. Well, you're in luck because there are some options to you. If you're a student in college, they actually have what's called a student credit card. These are actually really nice credit cards for, considering you don't have a credit history. This was actually the first type of credit card I owned. I had a student credit card that was through Discover. And just for my credit card, for example, I got some pretty nice benefits with it. So they offered me 5% cash back on certain items each quarter if I applied to their promotional. So basically each quarter they might say, give me 5% cash back on groceries or restaurants. It just depended on the quarter. And then I would get 1% cash back on every other purchase. So that's really nice. That's cash in my pocket for spending money I was gonna spend anyways with my debit card. So that's if you're in college. So let's say you're not in college. What credit card can you get if you don't have credit? Or let's say you, you tanked your credit and now you can't get another credit card. Where do you go now to improve your credit? you can do what's called a secured credit card. Secured credit cards work by you put a deposit down for the credit card saying, it's normally the, the deposit you put down is about 200 to $500 and you're putting a deposit down on that credit card saying, if I default on my payment, you guys can take this money to pay that default payment. It's basically the exact same concept as say you rent an apartment, you pay a security deposit, you have a friend come in, punch a hole through a wall, and now you've lost your security deposit. The hole through the wall was your missed payment for your secured credit card. So the, the benefit with this secured credit card is it helps you build your credit up so you can get an unsecured credit card. The whole idea of a secured credit card is just to boost your credit up enough so you can start getting the better credit cards and the better interest rates from banks. And we're about to go over an example of how having a better credit score can save you thousands on your mortgage or thousands on whatever loan you take from the bank because the higher your credit score is, the better the banks see you as a borrower and they're going to treat you better. This example comes directly from a website called MyFICO and I'll make sure to link that website in my description below just in case you want to check it out. In this example, we're looking at a fixed rate mortgage of $216,000. And in this example, we'll be looking at the two extreme ends of credit scores. So let's say you have a 760 to 850 credit score. You could expect to get a 3.34% interest rate on your loan. However, if you have a credit score between 620 and 639, you would receive a 4.93% interest rate instead. This difference in interest rate will result in $200 a month, which is $72,000 over the 30 year period of that mortgage. That's 72,000 extra dollars that you could be putting into a retirement fund instead of sinking into your house. So as you can see, having a better credit score can save you thousands of dollars on loans if you need to take out anything for residential or cars. It makes a huge, huge difference so please, please, please keep that in mind whenever you're going to buy that extra pair of shoes and thinking about defaulting on your credit. So having a higher credit score will not only just give you better interest rates for loans that you're taking out from banks, it'll also give you access to better credit cards. 
And by better, I just mean credit cards that have more benefits associated with them. If you have a higher credit score, banks are more willing to approve you for credit cards that have better travel plans and better cash back plans. I don't do a ton of travel, so I normally don't get credit cards that have really good travel plans associated with them, but I do get credit cards that have good cash back systems with them. And I typically get anywhere from 30 to $50 back a month on cash back. So as long as I'm staying inside my budget for that month with that credit card, I'm essentially getting paid by my credit card company for using their credit card because I'm not paying them any interest or anything and I'm only buying things that I've set up in my budget. So that extra 30 to $50 is all gains for me. So once you get a credit card, there's a couple factors that you want to keep in mind to make sure that you don't actually hurt your credit score by using that credit card. The FICO credit score takes into account five different categories, and the first and most important category is your payment history. Your payment history basically just tells banks if you're on time with your payments and if you've been paying off your full amount of debt each payment period. If you are to miss a payment, that missed payment will stay on your account for seven years so that'll be hurting your credit score for seven years so it's so important to pay off your entire debt at the end of every payment period every month if you want to have a credit card and to have a good credit score so another big category you're going to want to keep in mind with your credit cards is your utilization rate or your amount owed a utilization rate basically is just the amount you owe on your credit divided by your credit line so let's say you have a thousand dollar credit line and you owe three hundred dollars this means you have a utilization rate of thirty percent so the utilization rate makes up about thirty percent of how fico determines your credit score and FICO recommends that you keep a utilization rate of 30% or lower. Typically, the utilization rate works by the lower your utilization rate, the better your credit score is. I typically try to keep my utilization rate between 5 and 15%, and it has really helped my credit score because of that. So this brings up the point of old credit card accounts. So whenever you close an old credit card, that means that you're going to lose that credit line. So that means maybe you had two credit cards. You have a $5,000 credit card line and you have a $10,000 credit card line. If you were to go and close that $5,000 credit card line, you don't have as big of a credit line now, the base. You, you went from a $15,000 credit line to now a $10,000 credit line. So your utilization rate is going to jump up whenever you close that old credit card. So this brings up the point, maybe you don't always want to close old credit cards because this is going to increase your utilization rate and it can actually hurt your credit score, which is kind of backwards if you're thinking, well, I'm not using that credit card as much. I should just go ahead and close it so I don't have to worry about it, but it can actually hurt your credit score if you do that. And if that old credit card account is zero annual cost, it would make sense just to keep it open. Another reason why you might want to keep it open brings us to the next category, which is your credit history. So when you close old credit card accounts, you can sometimes lose that credit history. FICO might not take into account the old credit cards that you had on your account and have now been closed. So let's say you have a old student credit card account that's eight years old and you just got this new nice credit card that gives you better cash back or better points on travel and you want to go ahead and close that old student credit card account. You might not want to do that because whenever you close that old student credit card account, your credit line is going to look now like, hey, this guy just got this new credit card. He has it, say, only a few months, whereas you had that student credit card for eight years and it might not take into account whenever they're looking at your credit score. So if you're not paying any annual fees on that student credit card, I would just keep it open because it, it's not going to hurt you and it, it can only help you on your credit score. Your credit history will make up about 15% of your FICO credit score, so it's the third largest category of the five. And the last two categories make up 10% of your credit score apiece according to FICO. The last two categories are new credit and types of credit. So these aren't going to be as big of factors as your payment history, your amount owed, and your credit history. So it's not as essential to make sure that these are looking great as long as those first three categories look good because those first three categories make up 80% of your credit score. So your new types of credit, this basically just as the name implies, it's how often you're getting new credit accounts. So if you're 
it can look bad to lenders whenever you're opening up multiple new accounts quickly because it could represent that you are a risky borrower because it means, hey, maybe they're just trying to open up a ton of different lines of credit so that they can get more money to spend. And the types of credit is basically, do you, do you have a mortgage or is, is this on all credit cards? And it can help your credit score if you have multiple lines of different credit and you've been paying them all back responsibly. That can help boost your credit. But like I said, it's only worth 10% of your credit score. So it's not super essential to have a high credit score to have multiple types of credit, but it does help. That wraps up credit cards, guys. Credit cards are great financial tools to help boost your credit score and earn you thousands of dollars over your lifetime if you know how to use them correctly. If you're the type of person that's gonna budget and pay off their debt in full every payment period on time, then go get yourself a credit card because it's gonna take the money out of the bank's pocket and put it in your pocket. However, if you're the type of person that's not gonna budget and blows their credit line every month and rolls over debt to the next payment period, do not get a credit card. Please don't get a credit card. It's going to destroy you financially. So just avoid all that hassle. Just know the type of person you are and you're gonna be a lot happier because of it. And on that happy note, guys, that's gonna end the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This is a new channel, so I'm excited to see where it does go. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.